Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum ala khairan. Ramadan Mubarak, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Sister Farasat. Uh, so good to see you again and to see your paintings in the background. Alhamdulillah. And may Allah Ta'ala bless you and your family and all of you, all of you who are watching, who've been listening. May Allah reward uh, Sheikh Ismail Isa, mashallah, uh, for his uh, sacrifice and recitation. And uh, may Allah reward all the volunteers. And I want to begin by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen, Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ali Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, it is not yet Eid. I know some people are starting to say Eid Mubarak, uh, but Ramadan is not over. The 20, Ramadan has 29 or 30 days, not 27 days. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, take take uh, advantage and benefit from these last days of this most blessed, blessed month. Who, and we don't know if we'll ever have another Ramadan. We don't know, we, we, there's no guarantee. And we don't even know if Lil Qadr, uh, the night of power, the night of destiny, uh, the night of glory has even uh, come yet. We don't know. Right. It could come tonight, it could come tomorrow, or it could come the 30th night. It looks like we'll have 30, 30 nights of Ramadan uh, this year, inshallah, with Eid on Sunday, inshallah ta'ala. So again, hold off on the Eid Mubaraks. <laughs> you can say Eid Mubarak all you want, Saturday night, inshallah, Saturday night and Sunday morning, and throughout the day, inshallah ta'ala. And as long as you want, but yeah, take advantage of, still stay in the state of Ramadan, still keep striving. Today, uh, we are going to uh, complete our Jews gems, the, these jawahir of uh, each Jews, these jewels of each Jews. And uh, before I, I say that, I just want to again, as I did a few weeks ago to encourage everyone, uh, to give your fitra. Uh, I was informed earlier today uh, that we only have 10%, just 10% of what we usually collect. And so uh, give your fitra, uh, inshallah ta'ala, uh, for every person in your family who's Muslim, who's dependent on you, whether they live with you or not. Uh, you can go to our website and uh, you'll see tabs where you can uh, pay your fitrah so that we can distribute it to the poor, uh, to those who are needy, those who might be experiencing financial distress, especially at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic before, before the Eid, which is how it's supposed to be done. The fitrah should be given, should be distributed before Eid, and uh, you should, you must actually, you must give your zakat al-fitr before you pray the Eid prayer. So don't plan to give it on Sunday. It'll be, it's too late. Too late. Especially now with social distancing or physical distancing rather. It's too late. Who are you going to give it to? Right? So uh, we only have two, three days left. You know, two, three days left. So don't procrastinate. Inshallah, may Allah give us uh, success. And the fitrah, the Prophet ﷺ said, zakat al-fitr, there are many blessings in it. It's a purification for any uh, slips and, and objectionable speech that you made during the month of Ramadan. Also, there's a narration from the Prophet ﷺ that your fasting is suspended, suspended, in the heavens until you give your fitrah and then it is received by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the fitrah is $7 per, per person in your household uh, with a recommendation, if you're able, of $10 per person. But minimum is $7. It is $7 this year, uh, particularly because of the financial hardship that many people are going through. And also, because $7 per head in your family uh, is acceptable based on the calculation of the 
uh, fitrah based on weight as it is in the Hanafi uh, school of fiqh. So inshallah, seven at least, but if you can afford $10, then that's even better. It will help those who are receiving. Uh, last thing, fitrah is something every Muslim has to pay, whether you are rich or poor. It's, it's very different than zakatul mal with the nisab, with a threshold of zakatable income. The fitrah is an obligation on every Muslim every Muslim, whether you are a wealthy or whether you're living paycheck to paycheck, it's an obligation of each and every one of us. And so that's another reason why I'm encouraging, uh, the fatwa I'm giving this year is that uh, we go with the lower amount to make it easier on everybody, on our brothers and sisters. And Allah knows best. The 29th part of the Quran has the main theme of delivering warning and the means to achieve it, to achieve that deliverance. This part, the chapters, the suwar, are Meccan suwar. And it consists predominantly of a variety of warnings and, and admonitions. It begins by unveiling the reality of existence the reality of our existence and explaining the ultimate purpose of creation, the ultimate purpose of life and death are what? They are a test for us. But it is a test to bring out the best in you. You are put here to learn. You're put here to cultivate virtues. The test is meant to bring out the best. When you test, you know, my daughter earlier today was taking an AP exam. Right. What is it? A test shows what you know. It brings out what's inside of you. The test is not meant to humiliate you. No. Uh -uh. Allah Ta'ala created you for rahmah. Right. And except for the one who has Allah, Allah has mercy upon. And it's for that, for mercy, that Allah created them. And so this life is a test. But when you, when you hear the word test, don't think, oh, that means hardship. It's a test to bring out the goodness in you, to bring out the goodness in you, and to help you grow in knowledge. And this life, brothers and sisters, is really, if you want to sum it up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us into this world through our mothers, pure. Our hearts were pure. And our bodies, even if maybe some of us were born with some physical uh, disability, uh, our bodies, by and large, were born in a state of purity. You know, that smell, when you smell a newborn baby, right? That's a smell of purity, of pak, of tahara. And the goal of life is to return your heart and your body back to the earth and your soul, as we'll be talking about soon, you return your soul back to Allah in the same state of purity. After going through all of the trials and the tribulations and the joy and the uh, accomplishments of this world, to return your heart and your body and your mind back to their origins, to their sources in the same state of purity or close, close to it, that you entered this world with. May Allah give us success. That's what life is about. That's why we're here. To return this trust back to Allah as he gave it to us. That's the least we can do. And so at the beginning of this, of, of this surah, of this juz, this surah to mulk, the chapter of the kingdom, the physical kingdom though. The mulk refers to the physical kingdom of Allah, of God. And this chapter, it begins with calling human beings, upbraiding them so that they might have awe and fear of Allah Ta'ala and enjoins on us to contemplate the universe and all the signs of God that it contains. He who is able to make low the earth for his creatures, 
but also to send upon them a fierce stone field tempest, a violent wind to strike them down or deprive them of water, right? which is the secret of life. Uh, this surah, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said he, loves for, he loved for every believer to have this surah in their heart. And so if you have not memorized Surah Al-Mulk already, make it your uh, goal for this year, the year of 2020, to memorize the surah. It's only 30 ayat. You can memorize one ayah a week. And in less than a year, you would have, have it, you'd have it memorized. You can memorize one ayah a day. And in a month, you'll have it memorized. And, or you can memorize seven ayah a day and you'll have it memorized in less than a week. Wow. The next surah is the chapter of Al-Qalam, the pen. And in it is a stern warning for everyone who rejects faith, that they'll be branded on their noses, just as the dab, dabat al-ard, the beast of the earth that the Prophet Sallallahu mentions, and Allah mentions in the Quran, will brand the disbelievers on their noses. May Allah protect us from that. And the believers will be branded on their foreheads. And at that time, which this is one of the signs of the end of time, dabat al-ard, the beast of the earth, the scholars defer about what the beast actually looks like. Uh, but this branding will distinguish between every believer and every disbeliever. In fact, the hadith say you will be able to know who a believer is, who a mu'min is, and who a kafir, who a di disbeliever, a rejecter is, by looking at them. And they will know who they are. And may Allah Ta'ala brand us, may Allah brand us and our families and our children and our offspring and our loved ones to, to the Day of Judgment as believers, as mu'minin in Him. In this surah, at the end of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warns people, the people of Mecca, and by extension, the people of our time, that those of them who turn away in rejection might well encounter a similar fate to those who Allah had destroyed before for their transgressions against God and against the creatures of God. To say nothing of the terrible punishment not in this life, but in the eternal, the life eternally hereafter. And this reaches at the end with the climax of God saying, a respite shall I grant them, but truly powerful is my plan. Al-Haqa, the, the reality, the, uh, the reality, the chapter of the reality builds on this theme with the account of the people of Thamud, who we've been hearing about again and again throughout this month, that Allah destroyed with a violent wind, a tempest in eight days. There was violent winds at speeds we cannot even imagine that left the people like felled in hollow palm trunks. Then Allah relates the stories of Pharaoh and his folk, and it gives an account of the wretched state of the disbelievers in the hereafter those who reject God, those who reject Prophet Muhammad and the other prophets, may Allah bless them and grant them peace. Those who will be given their book of deeds in their left hand, behind their backs, may Allah protect us from that. May Allah give us our books in our right hand. And even though, and they will be unable to refuse it, their whole life will be on this record. Everything you ever said or did will be in this record. And you are writing and I'm writing our books of deeds right now. And such people, Ashabu Shimal, these people of the left hand, they will be overcome by remorse. His wealth and his power will have vanished from his side. The wealth and power that he or she had in this life, they will be snatched, they will be bound, and they will be flung into the hellfire with neither friend nor helper. This morning during the Rising with Rumi class, we talked about the hellfire, but why does hell exist? Many people ask this question, why is there hell? And one of the things that Imam Muhammad Jalaluddin Rumi rahmatullahi says, is that you, hell exists because of your evil deeds. 
that our evil deeds, the evil deeds of the people that Allah describes in Surah Al-Haqqah, it is those evil deeds that build hell. So don't ask why there's a hell, ask why am I choosing to do evil deeds? Likewise, heaven, the garden, paradise, al-jannah, it's built and cultivated through our good deeds. This is the balance that Allah has, has established in the cosmos. Heaven and hell are just, ultimately, they are reflections of our own souls. Right? They are reflections of our own souls. SubhanAllah. In the next chapter, Al-Ma'arij, the ascension, it emphasizes the befalling of a calamitous punishment which cannot be repelled. And I'm not going to go into all the, the details of this, but it, it mentions how people are going to be uh, fleeing from their wives, freeing, f- fleeing, running away from their spouses, their husbands, running away from their families. And the chapter of Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, in the 71th uh, chapter of the Quran, it also concludes this scene, exhorting man to contemplate, again, to meditate, to reflect upon nature, upon the natural world in creation, because in it, we will find lessons and knowledge of what we should know and how we should act, of what we should know and how we should act. The next chapter of Al-Jinn makes plain the affair of prophethood. And of course, this refers again to those jinn from Yemen. Uh, they, many of the scholars say that they were Jewish jinn. And jinn are, are real creatures. They are people like us, but people that are not human. They are persons that are made of fire, not clay like human beings, but like human beings, the jinn race or the jinn nation has the freedom to choose between good and evil. And some of, and they, some of them are Jewish, some are Christian, some are Muslim and, and Buddhist and Hindu and, and other religions. And they're different kinds of jinn, just like they're different kinds of human beings. Some walk on the ground, some fly in the air, some are very strong, some are weaker, you know, some go up or attempt to go up into the heavens to listen to the decree of Allah before it, it comes down to the earth. But they were barred from that, as we learn in Surah Al-Mulk. And so some of them, the Jewish jinn from Yemen, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu And as I mentioned before, a few days ago, even today you can go to the mosque of the jinn in Mecca. Look it up. You can go visit. And this is the mosque where these jinn embraced Islam, they became Muslim. And not only that, they did not only become Muslim, they gave bay'ah, they made the pledge of allegiance, not to the flag, right? Like many people do, right? Here in other countries, they made the pledge of allegiance to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah make us people who pledge allegiance to Allah and to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If the jinn did it, what about us? And the Sahaba did it, of course. We know it, Al-Aqaba, and, uh, mashallah. So, Surat al-Jinn. Lots of lessons in Surat al-Jinn, especially about how to seek knowledge. You want to learn how to seek knowledge? Read Surat al-Jinn. We find uh, a similar tone about delivering the message and seeking refuge with God and the importance of humility and blessed instruction in Surat al-Muzammil the chapter of the one covered up, right? The one wrapped up, enshrouded. And this relates to what the Prophet Sallallahu said to our mother, Lady Khadija the Great, and his family when he returned from receiving the first revelation of the Quran, Iqra bismi rabbika ladi khalaq, recite in the name of your Lord, in the name of your master who created all things, and the ayats, the five, the four ayat that come after it. And he said to her, Zammiluni, Zammiluni. He said to them, cover me, cover me. Because of how awesome and, and how that experience sh- shook him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the awesome responsibility. And how he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Khiftu ala nafsi. He said, I'm afraid for myself. 
because and my scholars, the teachers who taught me, say that this wasn't some, like some Muslims think, you know, based on a hadith that's mu'allaq in Sahih al-Bukhari, that the Prophet Sallallahu was somehow, you know, doubting himself or doubting, um, you know, his sanity or, or even, a'udhu billah, some Muslims think, that he was having suicidal thoughts. Of course, based on hadith that are not um, definitive about this issue. Brothers and sisters, he was asking to be covered because of what he saw from the unseen. He was asking to be covered, not because he thought he was going crazy. He never said that. There's, there's no hadith where he says, I thought I was going crazy. So why are so many Muslims and books of hadith attributing this to the Prophet Sallallahu Don't read into his words what's not literally there. And maybe as my shuyukh, like Sheikh Muhammad an ninawi and others, may Allah preserve him, taught us, maybe there's another interpretation. Maybe he was afraid for himself because he wasn't sure if he would be able to carry the amana of nubuwa at that point, at that first initial contact with the angelic presence of Gabriel, peace be upon him. Maybe that's a way of we should look at this rather than you know, reaching and you know, in our attempt to relate to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we you know, attribute mental illness, right? Mental illness to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know? So we should, you know, we should reconsider. This is all I'm asking. And Allah knows best, Allah knows the truth. This is just another possible, uh, interpretation. Then Surah Al-Mudathir, the one cloaked, right? Allah, قُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُدَثِرِ قُمْ فَأَنذِرِ Oh, you who is cloaked, right? You who's laying down, cloaked and wrapped, right? Allah says, stand, stand, meaning stand up and pray to Hajjud, the night prayer. Stand and rise and deliver the message, Qum fa'andhir. Pray at night, because praying at night is what purifies your heart and helps you become mukhlas, a person of sincerity and a person who's spiritually empowered. Spiritually empowered. So you can go out in the daytime and deliver the message with your words and your deeds and your beautiful character. So let us all stand and let us all warn uh, and, your, and your clothing, purify your clothing, right? Meaning, purify your heart. That's your, because that's your true clothing, your heart, right? And, and stay away from filth and impurities outside physical as well as spiritual, as well as mental impurities. You know, filthy thoughts, you know, filthy substances and filthy character states. And, well, and then your Lord magnify. Say, Allahu Akbar, declare the greatness of your Lord. And so, mashallah, there's so much here, but because of time, I want us to, uh, you know, go to the next in the final juz. But Surah Al-Qiyamah, the chapter of uh, the uh, standing, the day of standing, cha the sta cha Surah Al-Insan, the chapter of the human being, all of these Surah Al-Mursalat that Allah Ta'ala says 10 times in this Surah, whoa, whoa, how, un how unfortunate on that day are the deniers. May Allah Ta'ala not make us among the den deniers, but among those who have faith and who believe. And the last juz, and this will really end the juz gems, brothers and sisters, uh, tomorrow, um, we will just make dua. We will make dua, inshallah, with the khatam, inshallah ta'ala. Or Friday, we'll make dua with the khatam. This part, this last part, the 30th juz of the Quran, which many Muslims memorize. If, if you don't memorize, you, you find Muslims that they don't memorize the other parts of the Quran, at least they have memorized juz amma, right? Juz amma. And juz amma begins from Surah al Naba the chapter of the great news to Surat al-Nas, the chapter of humanity. Right? So the Quran ends with this chapter, the chapter of human beings. So this part commences with a question about what people are asking about. 
the one that disavows those who disavow the coming resurrection and who ask mockingly for it to be hastened. Allah invites them, these people who are asking and those people that are mocking, to wait, just wait. Wait till the day of judgment occurs. <laughs> when the reality will be revealed to them and humanity will be divided into two groups. Those who are the people of the right hand and those who are foremost, and which is one group, and may Allah make us among them, and the people of the left hand, those people who are destined with, uh, to go to the hellfire. May Allah protect us and save us. And in this chapter, we find instructions from Allah to ask beneficial questions. That's a part of faith. It's important to ask questions. And guidance towards two of the many paths to acquiring knowledge. One being seeking practical advice regarding the diligent observation of nature, again, of creation. That's why a Muslim should always be connected to nature, right? Going on hikes, sitting in your backyard on your front porch, and just sitting and watching the trees and the birds and the animals and the clouds and the rivers, that is a part of Islam. There is knowledge for you to learn there. And the other way that we learn of learning is by way of analogy and imagination, using your intellect, using what's inside you to arrive at deductions and inductions. The chapter, Anazi'at's, continues this theme, emphasizing the consternation of those who deny the resurrection when it actually befalls. Abasa, right, the chapter of the one who frowned, holds off on discussing the nature of prophethood and exposes the lies of those who disbelieve it until it too makes mention of the approaching hour. So this is the common theme right, in each of these three uh, surahs. And Allah names the approaching hour sakha, which means that which shatters the eardrums. Ya Allah, look at that image. <laughs> look at the image. That which will shatter the eardrums. Sakha. Deafening them to the cries of their breath. When your eardrums are shattered, you can't hear anything. But we know from this surah and other surahs that people are going to be crying on that day. If you can imagine people crying, children, people, men running from their wives, wives running from their husbands, children running from their parents, parents running away from their children and your friends, but you can't hear them. You know they're crying. You know they're screaming, but you can't hear the screams. Terrifying. Terrifying image. May Allah save, it, save us from it. Surah Al-Takwir co connects these states of affairs to the tremendous upturning of nature that, will, that, will, that all creation will experience. The sun being extinguished, the, the sun being extinguished, the mountains being uprooted and scattered, those who are dead being brought to life, and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mutafifin, He mentions the Sijin and the Illiyin, which there are two opinions about what these are. One of them is that they are both places. One, the other, that they are records, that they are records. There are some scholars that say that Illiyin is the record of the righteous, as we learn in Surah Al-Mutafifin. It's where the names of the righteous are kept. And Sijin, uh, is the name of the record, Kitab al-Marqum, where the corrupt and those low, base, evil souls, their names are kept. May Allah not make us among them. And other scholars say the Illiyin, which means the most high place, is the place where in the seventh heaven, it's a place in the seventh heaven near the throne of Allah Ta'ala where the souls of the believers stay until resurrection. May Allah make us among them. And that Sijin is a place in the lowest part of hell where the souls of the corrupt and the disobedient 
and those who denied God, where they stay till resurrection. May Allah not make us among them. So in Shikak, uh, we see the spectacle of the righteous in a state of joy, and the unrighteous are cast into a blazing fire, and they beg for their own destruction. And Surat al Inshikak. Because when in the hellfire, la ya mutuna fiha wa la yahya, you're not alive, but then you're not dead either. SubhanAllah. May Allah not make us among such people in this life or the next life. There are how many people are not really alive in this world right now, but they're not dead either. Like zombies. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from being the walking dead. Al-Buruj, the chapter of the constellations, gives a grave admin admonition about both arrogantly turning away from the truth and hindering others from it. Giving the example of the people of the trench that God destroyed and promised a fiery punishment. The following chapters after Al-Buruj, they lay out the nature and the, the people of the trench, or for, uh, according to some scholars, were from Ethiopia. They were in Ethiopia. And they, uh, subhanAllah, these uh, young boys were, uh, mashallah, their faith in Allah Ta'ala, uh, they were tortured for their faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The following chapters continue to lay bare for us the nature of man of, and woman and their human destiny, that we're all on a return journey to his Lord, each and every one of us, and that uh, Surah Al-Tariq and Surah Al-A'la, they clarify the nature of this message, as well as the means of benefiting from it through respect and humility for God. And this is really what the believer has in their, his or her heart, respect and humility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the result that, that that person, that man, that woman, that boy or girl, they will be elevated on the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this elevation in Surat al ghashiyah right? And in Al-Fajr, Allah de de delivers a warning against following the ways of the people of Thamud, the people of Iran, the people of Pharaoh, of Egypt, and others like them, exhorting them instead to walk in the footsteps of the righteous. And then Allah in this uh, surah describes the souls of those who are righteous, who ultimately enter paradise, that there are souls that are calm and serene, mutma'inna, and that they are pleased with Allah they finally reach a stage either in this life or the next life where they accept Allah as Allah with all of his names and attributes. They accept Allah as, uh, as Al-Afu, as the one who pardons. And they also accept Allah as Al-Muntaqim, the master of retribution. They accept Allah as Al-Muhyi, when they have a baby, Allah gives life. And they also accept Allah as Al-Mumit, if Allah Ta'ala takes the life of that child, they accept Allah with all of his beautiful names. All of his names are beautiful, even the ones that sometimes are bitter for us to experience. Surah Al-Balad makes clear that it is Allah, that is God who shows people the path of goodness and evil and gives them ownership of the faculty of reflection. Surah Al-Shams has the most extensive number of oaths sworn by Allah and those oaths are a testimony that the person who purifies their soul is successful. And the one who stifles, who neglects, or who buries the potential of their soul for growth is destroyed. And we find ourselves in Ramadan, which is the best time of the year to purify and grow, to embellish, to adorn, to illuminate the soul of the human being. Chapter al duha Al-Sharh, al and Al-Alaq, they inform us about the noble messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that God has selected, who, who, who he nurtured under his loving gaze, and whose breast, whose heart he expanded, brought him forth in the most perfect, the most perfect, and this is something that some Muslims struggle with, and I want to encourage you to accept and to study. And don't just say, believe it, because I'm telling you, but study it, study it, and come and ask me questions about it 
the perfection of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that he was a perfect human being. Divine perfection, absolute perfection is only for Allah, but human perfection belonged to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by following him, we reach our highest potential. Following him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in Surah Al-Qadr, right, which is very relevant to us as we're in these last days and nights of Ramadan, and Surah to Bayna, the chapter of the proof, they tell of the reality of this message, which descended in its entirety on the night of power. The, 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 the scholars defer as to whether it descended in its entirety to the lowest heaven uh, or to the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sama' al-Dunya, or to the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where at Sama' al-Dunya, the lowest heaven, the angels, a safara, at Bayt al-Izzah, in the house of honor and, and might, they wrote down the entire Quran, and then uh, it was delivered, uh, in, uh, you know, peace in, in sections over 23 years to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it was, they all agree that the first ayat were given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the night of, the first night of power, Laylatul Qadr. Now, but there's a difference of opinion about whether it was all revealed to Sama' al-Dunya or, or not. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. These surahs also inform that the disbelievers and the people of the book will persist in their rejection of it and their disbelief in the Messenger وسلم, who came to them reciting scriptures pure and holy, meaning those who Allah Ta'ala does not guide to Islam, those who do not humble themselves to the truth. And in conclusion, I know I've gone over uh, my allotted, my usual time, but again, we're ending, this is our last night really going over uh, these gems from the Jews. And so uh, I want to complete the amana. I consider this an amana, a trust. Uh, so I want to complete it. So we just have a few more gems to share. The chapters of Al-Zadzala, Al-Adiyat, Al-Qari'a, and at takathur they return to the theme of the manifestation of the realities of things that will occur on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, we're going to see the real truth of our intentions, of our actions, of our states, of our, of our uh, stations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those around us who share this world with us, the billions and billions and billions of people that have lived the remaining chapters of this uh, juz, of this part, devote themselves to explaining some of the factors that prevent the human being from attaining deliverance of his own soul, of her own soul. And really, brothers and sisters, if you study, and I know a lot of times we kind of associate the short surahs with, you know, that's what we learned when we were children. That's what my, my beta, my beti, my child, my son and daughter is learning in, you know, uh, Quran school or weekend school. But these short surahs, and that's one of the reasons why I recite them so much. One, to make it easier on the brothers and sisters who are following me in the congregational prayer. But two, because they give you a map, complete map of how to get close to Allah. Complete. Complete from Surah Al-Zalzala to the end of Surah Al-Nas, and really all of Juz Amma, all of Juz Amma gives you a complete spiritual manual. If you study it that way, you'll find it. And uh, one of our teachers who was supposed to join us for the Quran and Me conference, uh, Sheikha Dr. Nadia Kataranji with the Good Tree Institute, she teaches this like a science. She has charts and PowerPoints and work, you know, worksheets and workshops just on how to use Juz Amma and Al Fatiha to become not just a better Muslim, but and not just a better human being, but an enlightened, spiritually enlightened being. It's all there in Al Fatiha and Juz Amma. May Allah preserve her. These obstacles, the obstacles that are that we're taught in these short surahs that prevent us from attaining the deliverance of our own souls are the uh, falling into disobedience to Allah, 
disobeying the commandments of God, greed for wealth and status and honor, wanting to be respected, right? Craving it, becoming distracted by our appetites, our food and drink and conjugal appetites, and a lack of willingness to sacrifice our money, to sacrifice our time, to sacrifice our knowledge, to sacrifice our lives for something that's greater than us, something that transcends us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is described in Al-Asr, Al-Humaza, Al-Fil, Quraysh, Al-Ma'un, the chapter Al-Kawthar and Al-Nasr, they give glad tidings of victory and the attainment of great good, commanding human beings to hold fast to God and adhere to the affirmation of his oneness. In Al-Nasr, we know from the hadith that that was revealed about 80 days before the passing of the Prophet Sallallahu It was the last surah, not the last ayah, but the last complete surah to be revealed according to the scholars of Ulum al-Quran, of the, the sciences of the Quran. Hold fast to God and hold fast to dhikr of Allah. Even when you're victorious, don't gloat, don't brag about how amazing you are or how great your team is. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Rather, declare the perfection of your Lord and seek forgiveness. <laughs> Even when you you are, have been given victory. Seek forgiveness. Stay humble. Stay humble. May Allah make us humble. And lastly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Tabbat Yada, Surah Al-Lahab, the chapter of the flames, Allah shows us the ultimate end of those who harm the Prophet sallallahu and who harm, intentionally harm and undermine and seek to sabotage uh, the Prophet Muhammad and those who follow in his footsteps in every age and every time and every generation. Uh, Abu Lahab, the father of flames and his wife, uh, they, Allah mentions their punishment. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from being like su such people. And Surat Al-Ikhlas, which literally means sincerity, it teaches us the absolute essentials of Tawheed, that Allah exists, and Allah is real, God is real, and God is indivisible. He is absolutely one, he is incomparable, nothing and no one is like him. Allah was not born, Allah does not come out of anything, he has always existed, and nothing comes out of Allah. Nothing is born out of Allah. Nothing, there's no, nothing. Allah is nothing. He, 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 was not born, nor does he give birth. He was not born, nor does he give birth. He was made of something, nor is anything made out of Allah. And there's nothing and no one that can match him, that is like him, that is an opponent or a partner for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this, Love letter, this love letter, right? As, as my friend uh, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, may Allah preserve him, preserve him, calls the Quran, this risala to mahabba, this risala to ishq, the Quran, it ends with these two surahs, Surah Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas, which, like Al Fatiha, that's at the beginning of the Quran, are prayers. They're prayers. So the Quran begins with the prayer for guidance and it ends with prayers for protection, right? And between them, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. And what will help us realize what is between them, between seeking guidance and seeking protection? Allah teaches us to seek protection from the evil of what he's created, the evil of sorcerers and witches, the evil of, of envious, jealous people, people who see your success, you know, and your gifts, the gifts Allah has given you freely, and they don't want you to have it. They want to have it. May Allah protect us from being envious. And may Allah protect us from the enviers and the evil eye. 
and Allah Ta'ala teaches us how to seek protection from jinn and from uh, the evil of human beings uh, and from shaitan. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, the, the shaitan, all he can do is whisper in the heart. And he, Allah describes him as al-khannas, the one who slinks away. He, he, but why does he slink away, the brothers and sisters, when we do dhikr of Allah? And this is a beautiful way to end this juice gem. It is through the remembrance of Allah that you can conquer shaitan, your shaitan. Because each and every one of us has a qareen from the shayateen, has a, 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 a companion. Qareen means a companion from the devils that is assigned to us. Just as we have a qareen, a companion from the angels that is assigned to us. And the way to conquer your shaitan and the other shayateen is through remembrance of Allah. And the Quran is the best dhikr. The Quran is the best dhikr. So may Allah Ta'ala increase us in dhikr of Allah. May Allah Ta'ala increase us in reciting the Qur'an in this month of Ramadan. Recite more Qur'an in these next two, three days of Ramadan that are left or so. Then you've recited the whole Ramadan, inshallah, on a daily basis. May Allah Ta'ala give you success. Thank you all for your, uh, mashallah, your patience. I see, mashallah, there's still lots of people still uh, signed in. Again, pardon me for... Uh, going over, uh, but I did want to complete tonight. Uh, Imam Zaid Shakir uh, will be joining us tomorrow at 10 p.m. Uh, or a little after that, inshallah, but be here after the recitation of the Quran uh, by Sheikh Ismail, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and so uh, with that, again, as I reminded you every night, uh, make dua for our dear, dear, dear brother, Imam Suhaib Sultan and his family, and uh, make dua for all of our brothers and sisters around the world, especially those who are in places uh, where you know, they can't spend Ramadan with air conditioning and, and homes that are comfortable. And many of them are in refugee camps. Many of our brothers, Syrian brothers and, and sisters, and Yemeni brothers and sisters, and Rohingya uh, brothers and sisters, uh, and Uyghur brothers and sisters in China, uh, they are not able to have the luxury of having a virtual Ramadan like you and me. Right? They don't have that luxury. Or having a Ramadan, you know, where you're so comfortable and mashallah, you know, protected from the elements and you can have social distancing and have your etikaf and, you know, mashallah. So pray for them, pray for them. And, and others whom I may have missed, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, of course, always. Uh, and our brothers and sisters in Congo, where so many masajid have been destroyed in the Congo. So many masajid have been destroyed in the Congo. May Allah Ta'ala protect the Muslims of the Congo. And with that, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa nashadu an la ilaha ila anta wa nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli ala seedina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Oh Allah, we ask you through all of your names to have mercy upon us, Ya Allah. We ask that every, every lesson that we've learned from these the jawahir of the Qur'an, these gems of the Qur'an, Ya Allah, we ask that you place those lessons and that wisdom and that knowledge in our heart, Ya Allah, and that you guard it there, Ya Allah, and that it always be there for us to summon and to reflect upon and to act upon, Ya Allah. Will it help us to live uh, the lessons and to embody the truth that and the beauty that we have listened to and learned in these in the recitation of the Quran by Ismail Isa and through these lessons, these juz gems, oh Allah help us to reflect upon and to act upon the wisdom and the light and the guidance. Oh Allah, we ask that you make the Quran a light for us. We ask that you make it a healing for us. We ask that you make it a mercy and divine compassionate love for us. Let it be our guide. Let the Qur'an be our imam, ya Allah. Let it be our imam. Let it be our leader. O Allah, place the Qur'an in front of us in every aspect of our lives, in the lives of our children, in the lives of our wives, in the lives of our husbands, in the lives of our relatives, in the lives of our neighbors, in the lives of our fellow citizens, in the lives of our, our fellow human beings, ya Allah. Place the Qur'an, ya Allah, at the front, Ya Allah, of each and every one of us, Ya Allah, so that 
they can receive this healing and this light and this clarity and this guidance. O oh Allah, forgive this poor needy slave, Ya Allah, forgive him for anything he said that was incorrect, anything he said that was wrong, Ya Allah, anything that he said that may have hurt the feelings of any of your beloved uh, servants, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, forgive this uh, poor needy slave for anything he said uh, that was unbefitting of you, your majesty, in your beauty, Ya Allah, and your divine perfection, or of that of the Prophet Wasallam, or his messengers. O oh Allah, we ask that you forgive this poor, needy servant for saying and teaching things that he himself is not practicing. Ya Allah, O oh Allah, we pray, Ya Allah, for forgiveness. Ya Allah, if there's any benefit in these lessons, all praise and things belong to you. Only the mistakes are mine. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give us success, O oh Allah, to witness Laylatul Qadr, to experience Laylatul Qadr, to and receive its immense reward that's better than a thousand months. Ya Allah, grant us, Ya Allah, the blessings and the breezes and the lights and the secrets, Ya Allah, and the and the and the mercies, Ya Allah, and the and the and the and the and the elevation and the purification of Laylatul Qadr. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bless us in these last days of Ramadan, Ya Allah and return Ramadan to us, Ya Allah. We send it back to us, Ya Allah. Send it down to us, Ya Allah. Year after year after year after year after year, Ya Allah. We intend to fast Ramadan. If you granted us life to the Day of Judgment, we intend it right now to fast every Ramadan to the Day of Judgment, Ya Allah. If you gave us life for that long, Ya Allah, we ask you, O Allah, to complete our lights for us and to make us from the people of the right hand, to make us from the foremost, to make us from the people of Iliyin, to make us from the people of Jannah al Ma'wa, of Jannah al Firdaus, of your Jannah, Ya Rabb al Alameen. Make us from those whose souls are mutma'inna, radiyat al Mardiya, Ya Rabb al Alameen. O Allah, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering, Ya Allah, who are in pain, who are in isolation, who are in refugee camps, who are in concentration camps, Ya Allah, on different parts of the world, those who are suffering in this world, Ya Allah. We pray that you alleviate their suffering and you, we pray, Ya Allah, that you inspire us with taking action with our money and with our time and with our talents to assist them, Ya Allah, as long as we breathe. Ya Rabbil Alameen, bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallam wa sallam subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة with the intention of acceptance الفاتحة الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مجدوا عليهم رب العالمين آمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم have a blessed night remember me and my family in your prayers Remember our whole community in your prayers. Assalamu alaikum.